Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman, uh, Alexa, turn on the office. And um, uh, earlier this week, I was messing around with this device I got from uh, our friends over at Adafruit. This is a matrix display and it's powered by the Matrix Portal M4. It's a little IoT project and you can put as many of these as you want together and this will power them. It's amazing. It's this uh, LED matrix hub. Right now it's being powered off of USB-C. Uh, it's connected right now to my uh, my machine. And that's showing a real-time view of my blood sugar. Because I'm a type 1 diabetic, that's my hello world. Um, I've got this implant in my arm here. It's a Dexcom. And I've got my insulin pump. You can see other videos uh, where I talk about that. So hello world for me is... Uh, get some data and display some data. Uh, folks often do this kind of stuff with weather data, but this is my weather data. So you've seen my videos where I put my blood sugar in my Git prompt, um, or in this case here, uh, in different and various screens. So in doing this, this is a good learning opportunity for me because I'm gonna go and make an HTTP request, deal with SSL and certificates, if you don't have built-in support for those libraries, retrieve JSON information, get that JSON data, parse the JSON data, deal with multiple data types, uh, deal with a trend line, in this case, the direction of my blood sugar that's currently going, uh, and then also uh, in the example of this matrix display, learn about colors and how this display library works. Uh, drawing on a 64 by 32 tiny little display. So anytime I get a new device, I do that. Uh, one of the devices I'm going to try a little bit later is this Meadow device that is runs C Sharp from Wilderness Labs, and this is the project. This is the chip. The the, the well, see that's the chip. This is their board, and then they've got this project board with a little little screen built in. So hello world for me will always be getting my my blood sugar. So we can see that right now it is uh, 82 and uh, here's the trick though I don't speak Python and this is using circuit Python now circuit Python is freaking amazing circuit Python is a beautiful thing let me show you this so the deal is you uh, have your device your circuit Python device and when you plug it into your machine it shows up as a disk drive which is such a good idea such a clever idea such a clever idea. So you put all your code in this code.py, and then when you hit save, the device reboots and then runs your code. So from a learning how to code perspective, from a getting started with IoT perspective, it's just genius, just uh, chef's kiss. So I love this. It's just wonderful. So uh, then what I do is I load that up into Visual Studio Code. And I've got that directory. So you see my G drive here is loaded up and I'm in that directory right now. Then I go and get the circuit Python from Joe DeVivo uh, plugin here. And this little plugin has a bunch of features. Uh, he actually apparently saw uh, a blog post that I did uh, on the VS Code Arduino sub uh, extension and he adds some features one of the ones that he adds is the ability to also connect to the com port because when you're plugging into circuit python board like this one it shows up as a disk drive and as a com port and that com port you can listen to and you can see kind of debug output from that all right now again i don't speak python so what i wanted to show you since i'm often teaching you c sharp is how someone that doesn't know a language can get it working and bumble along, but I, you know, I'm probably never going to be able to do uh, idiomatic correct Python. So apologies ahead of time for my crappy, uh, my crappy code. Um, here's my prompt. You can see I have not refreshed my prompt, so my blood sugar was eight uh, was 106 in that example. But if we bring my uh, actual prompt over here, and uh, you can see that there's uh, currently 84, and that'll update every five minutes because it's uh, it's coming off of the the Dexcom sensor. All right, so the thing that's cool about CircuitPython is that they ship with this moon phase sample. And this sample that this gentleman, Phil Burgess, did for Adafruit um, includes drawing to the screen and putting a moon phase on the screen. So it gets me started. Uh, but uh, I wanted to basically start with that and then you know move very quickly away. But what I've learned 
so far is that you import libraries like this, just like you reference a NuGet package in C Sharp, or you include in C or C++. This is a concept that is kind of universal, bringing in packages. Then we can say here, bringing in pieces of packages. I just want RTC from RTC, or I just want bitmap fonts from here, or I want these two things from network and matrix respectively, bringing in these fractional pieces of stuff. I've learned that. Um, then I see their try catch called try and accept. So here I'm importing secrets. I'm keeping my Wi-Fi password and details in um, a secrets.py. Um, and then this is pretty cool. I'm also using GitHub Copilot. And in doing that, GitHub is intuiting what I want to do. So I just typed in red, green, yellow, because I want the... Uh, the blood sugar to show up red, green, or yellow, depending on whether or not my blood sugar is good. Notice how they're assuming, oh, no, you might type blue next, and then they're putting that there for me. Maybe I could do peach. Are they, and look at that, and they figure it out for you. Then you can just hit tab. So that made things really fast. Then I was going to put Unicode code points for these glyphs for my trend line. Is my blood sugar going up or my blood sugar going sideways or down? So when I started doing that, it was almost like in Excel when you start typing, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then it goes, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, and it gives you the whole thing. Or you start typing January, February, and it goes and auto completes it. This is really cool. So it noticed as soon as I said up arrow and down arrow that I might want to do other things. So I've got those glyphs ready to go. Now, um, I don't... Uh, know the correct ways to do this. I could have asked Copilot, but I looked at the sample. So if I do this wrong, apologies ahead of time. But basically, I just made a class called sugar data to hold my data. And then I'm, I've got a, a secret token uh, because my API, while on the public internet, does not allow folks to call and get my blood sugar. Right now, I'm grabbing it with Night Scout, which is an open source project that uh, uh, our friends do. And then I'm hosting that in the cloud and I'm grabbing the last five blood sugars from a URL. And then we say, Jason loads. Hey, Jason, go and load this out here. And all that data is going to be sitting in this full data. Now, here's where I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but um, I could have dug out each module. Uh, you know, so I could have dug out the Jason from the shape of that Jason, but I kind of built a dictionary and uh, did some left hand, right hand work. Um, right here, I'm not doing it very well because I'm just going and taking whatever data type this is and putting it in the same place. But at some point, because this isn't really a date, it's actually an epoch, epoch, uh, to do. Okay. Oh, ooh, look at that. Oh, freaking co-pilot. Look at that. Oh, they actually were writing the comment for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Epoch. That was creepy. Not opacity. Epoch. Yeah, it's so cool. It's basically like, yeah, you probably meant that. So that's cool. So now I have this, this list filled with objects that are shaped like this. Again, I don't really know in Python the right way to do that. Like in this case, it's kind of a dictionary of stuff. Should it be strongly typed? Should it be not strongly typed? I got to get my brain in that more chill Python vibe. Then I print that out. And if it doesn't work, well, maybe it's a transient error. I'll try again in, uh, in 15 seconds. Then here's some interesting stuff. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this because I think there's philosophically something going on here. When you are learning how to code, whether it be learning how to code an Adafruit device like this, which is like low level IoT, or you're learning a new language like Python, how much should you know? Like, and then a miracle happens and these three variables just got stuff in them. Or then a miracle happens and a bunch of math. This is a thing. We hear a lot about folks learning how to code, copy pasting from Stack Overflow. If you copy paste lines 81 through 84 or 83 and you see that code and you go, gosh, I know what's happening there. It's looking at the accelerometer, which is sitting in the Excel Excel variable there. It's looking at y and x of the accelerometer. And then a miracle happens. It does some math and then a rotation pops out. How much should you know? I wanted to, to do that experiment here and talk about that because 
I thought it was interesting. I don't 100% know where like that magic number comes from. I do know what pi is. I do know that we're timesing something by 90, presumably, degrees here. Uh, is this an arc tangent? Uh, okay, it is. I got lucky there. Return the arc tangent measured in radians of y and x. So here we're taking the opposite or the negative of the uh, variable y. So it looks like we have some uh, ray and we're looking at getting the degree, uh, the arc tangent of that ray, and then adding pi. So I wanted to explore that. So in order to figure this out, I drop into my terminal and I run Python and I goof around for a while and I import math as I'm still learning here. And then I started feeding in chunks of this code. So first I wanted to just run the arc tangent by itself. And then I wanted to, you know, just run the arc tangent and add pi and see what ha happens. Uh, down here you can see me entering in different values. Oops. Here's an example. Oops. That's not a good example. I'll scroll up a little bit. Here's an example where I put x and y at 0 and negative 10, and I got back 270. And here I put it at 10, 10, which would be up to the right. I got back 180. I wanted to find out what the accelerometer was doing here. Actually, I just bumped the reset button. We'll see if it boots up again. That'll be cool. Um, oh, there, that is cool. So anyway, as I'm rotating this, see? You see that rotation? Here the pipe, here the... Uh, Look, see how the text all just got rotated? Isn't that cool? If I flip it back this way, we'll see it rotate this way. See how that's right there? Isn't that clever? So that accelerometer then allows us to make our decision. And then if you see right there, the G drive just popped up because of uh, this thing starting up. So that's super cool. So that's going to load my blood sugar there in a second. How far do you go? Do I need to understand all the math, remind myself of these things, or just understand it to the point where I know that the accelerometer exists. We're going to do some math. We're going to figure out the rotation 0, 90, 180, 270. And then that's going to let us know how we're going to draw on the screen. I thought that that was enough. So then we go and say load fonts. A lot of us take fonts for granted. We assume that these fonts are just going to work and everything's going to be fine. But in fact, there's a little bit more going on there than just uh, random fonts. Bitmap fonts are not true type fonts. They are uh, glyphs that appear in a certain way. So I'm going to bring up what's called the BDF viewer, the bitmap font viewer, put that over here. And I wanted to understand that as well. Why does this matter? Well, you don't have enough memory on an IoT device in order to bring up um, these fonts. So they give you these bitmap fonts and you want to bring back the one that has the littlest amount of information possible. So here's a bitmap font. It's almost like a sprite. And then you say, well, which one of these do I want to load? I, do I want them all? Do I want just one of them? You can save memory by saying, just give me these glyphs. So here I'm asking for the symbol font, the numbers that I want, and then the arrows that point in a certain direction. And I don't think I've necessarily got all of these done yet. I need to make sure that I've got seven glyphs here, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven glyphs there. And then we can see that my screen just booted back up. Blood sugar is now 83. So that succeeded. So how far do you need to know? Well, you know that there's an abstraction called load glyphs, and you know that it's pulling bitmaps out. But knowing that there's a memory constraint issue here is important. I'm actually not currently using large font and small font. I'm still poking around trying to figure out what's next. I think I want to draw a chart or a graph behind it with a trend line for my blood sugar, which I think would be really cool. And then here we go and add our labels. We take that symbol font. Now here's a part that I'm confused about. I actually don't know how I'm going to solve this because in Adafruit, you make a label, you put it into a group that's going to be displayed on the screen, and then you give it the color ahead of time or a priori, if you want to sound fancy. And then you take a look at the width of the display. You subtract the box that surrounds your text, divide by two, and that gives you the centered location and you get your x you take the height divide by two and that's the center vertically and then you can go and display your group of text and that's why our text appears both centered horizontally and vertically but it already got set to green okay so let's go down we'll grab our time zone and our token to talk to our website we'll get our local time and everything 
and then we've got this main loop. We're going to do this while true, and while true in, every, in any language, Python or C Sharp means forever. And then right now, I'm just checking the time and resetting every, uh, every five minutes. I start out with the text color green, and this was my attempt to say if my blood sugar is over 200, turn it red. Problem is, I already set up my color up here. And there doesn't appear to be a way to change that color ahead of time. I'm sure I'll figure that out or one of my friends in the comments will bring that up. I also have a little bit of uh, cheap, cheesy exception handling where if, if this breaks, I'm doing what's called breaking the law of Demeter. I'm digging into sugar.sugar list, assuming that, that it works. I'm going sugar list at zero, assuming it works. And then I'm digging even deeper. If anything doesn't look right or anything is malformed, I'm going to cause an exception. I'm assuming it didn't work because something happened on the server. And uh, then I wait a minute and I come back later. And I noticed that continue here uh, is kind of like break. So in, in, in Python, you're running through a while loop and you say continue. It's going to start at the beginning of the while loop and continue as opposed to break out of the thing. And then I set up my, this is cheesy. Again, I want to show you all bad code and good code because it's like, well, what do we do? I could make a transformation function. I could make a switch statement. Right now, I basically have this enumeration where I want to map the text, the text flat or the text 45 up. It's literally a string in the JSON. And I want to map it to right arrow, up arrow, double up, double down, things like that. So I'm trying to map strings to um, glyphs, where those glyphs are like this. So the, the text flat came back from the uh, server, and I turned it into a right arrow. What's the right way to do that? We don't know. And this is when you're learning any language, making yourself understood, and it works. It does work. I can show it to you. I just did. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it is idiomatic or correct. Same thing if you're learning a new language, you're speaking Spanish or English or Chinese. You make yourself understood, and then you make yourself understood like a native. So you can see me attempting to change the color here. There isn't a color one because I can't seem to figure that out. It looks like the, the label picked its color ahead of time. And this is an attempt that nothing happens on this line of code here. And then you can see that I, again, calculate the width based on um, the new text. That box is moving around based on the width of the text. And then uh, here, this text direction is, look at that. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Look at that constant. I love how Visual Studio Code is giving me a visualization of that Unicode right there so you can see what that would look like. Then I go and repaint the screen. I sleep five minutes and come back later. Is it five minutes or five seconds? Eek! Oh, okay. This brings up an interesting point. So here I'm sleeping five seconds and I start at the beginning and ultimately I'm spinning around and I could remove all of this and then sleep down at the bottom. Uh, it looks like I'm just checking this and then continuing. So I need to think about why am I doing that? I don't really need to do any of this. I guess I was thinking I would have a time down here and I'd be updating the current local time because right now I can't tell when this happened, nor do I have a clock. So do I want to spin tightly in that uh, in that loop and show the, the clock every second or every five seconds or every minute? Or do I want to chill, save power, IoT, remember, save power and then just wake up uh, later in uh, in five minutes? So that's something else to think about. So anyway, I'm messing around, I'm learning a lot, I'm having fun, and I encourage you to do the same thing because, uh, you know, just because you're a full-time C-sharp programmer or a uh, JavaScript programmer doesn't mean that you can't just mess around and have some good fun. Uh, so, thought that was cool, wanted to share that with you all. Feel free to comment if you think this video sucks, and subscribe if you think it doesn't.